Praise the Lord, Ephesians family. Welcome this morning. I am, I am so excited to be here today. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come on, let's stand to our feet. I'm ready to praise the Lord. In fact, I'm so ready to praise the Lord. I found a scripture about it. We're going to read Psalms 113, and we're going to go from the New American Standard Version. It says, praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above the nations. His glory is above the heavens. This is the part right here. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is a throne on high? Who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He makes them to sit with princes, with the princes of his people. I'm going to pause here because when I read this, this is for someone. He makes the barren woman abide in the house of the Lord as a joyful mother of children. I'm just going to take a leap here. I might, you might, might, you know, I'm just going to say this. Maybe there's somebody that's watching the streamer that's in the service today that fits that particular scripture. That you and your husband have been trying to have a child. You can take that scripture and apply it. This is extra today. That you will go from being the barren woman to the joyful mother. You can't have a child and he'll say, uh-uh, I'll stamp my approval on that. You go ahead and be blessed. I'm going to take you from being poor and I'm going to let you sit with princes. That's our God. That's our God. Who is like our God? Who is like our God? I'm so grateful for God today. Are you today? Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, this morning we appreciate you. We love you today, God. Lord, we love that we can come into your house and to praise your our praise you are worthy of our praise father as we're in this place today god if there's anything that we've done that's keeping us from being in your presence today we apologize we repent father we want to be in your presence with clean hands and a pure heart because we want to receive all that you have for us and we want to love on you with all of our heart in the best way possible, Lord. Father, today, even as the word goes forth, I pray that you bless our pastor, bless the word. We love the word. We love the life-changing word of God. Presence fruitful in, in just understanding in our development, Father. Today we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I climbed up to the highest mountain. I looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I couldn't find nobody mm -hmm. I went across the deep blue sea I couldn't find one to compare To your grace, your love, your mercy Nobody greater, nobody greater than you mm -hmm. I searched all over couldn't find nobody. Hallelujah. Nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. Mm. Nobody can heal like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. All 
awesome in all your ways and mighty is your hand. So high and low, high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Oh, nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Yeah, come on, sing it with us this morning. Say, hey, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, high and low, still couldn't find. with me. It's simple. It just goes like this. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. No. Nobody, nobody greater, greater than, than you. Oh, we believe that today. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. No, no. Nobody greater I got that. than you. Come on. I know we know the song. Now let me sing it by myself. Say, nobody greater. Nobody Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Search all over the world and can find nobody, no. greater than you, Lord, but high and low, but deep and wide, there's no one like you, our Father, there's no one like you, Lord, no one like you, Lord. I got a song, maybe this one will be easy. There is none 
like you. Hallelujah. Eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. If you know this, sing it out with me. There is none unison, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart, and no one else can touch my heart like you. I can search through all eternity. I can search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none, there is none, there is none, there is none. There is none. Yeah, sing that again. There is none, no, oh, no, no, no. There is none, say. There is none like you Cause I searched all over Couldn't find nobody I looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody Hallelujah Nobody greater Nobody greater, no Nobody greater than you. I'm going to do it again, Jermaine, because it was good to me. I'm going to sing it one more time. Say, there is none like you. Hallelujah. That just blesses my soul. Sing it. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And I can serve. I can search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none. No one in the world, there is none. There is none. Oh, there is none. No one can save, no one can deliver. There is none. The lover of my soul, there is none. There is none, no friend, no companion like you, Lord. There is none, there is none, there is none. So one more time, come on, sing it. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. I'm nobody greater, yeah. I'm nobody greater, Lord. I'm nobody greater than you. Say, so searched all over, say, get out. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low, down. still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Time. So nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, no, no, no. Nobody greater than you. One last time, one last time. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, no. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give our great God some praise. Hallelujah. We love you today, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Ephesians. Thank you for choosing us today. Welcome to those that are online with us. 
At this time, what we do is we welcome our guests and visitors that are here for the first time. We ask that you raise your hand. First time guests and visitors. And what we have is some... The young ladies are coming around to give you a card. You fill it out and you can put it in the offering basket when we do offering. Also, what we do is welcome you. Usually we do hugs, but because of the corona, what we do is everybody stands up, turns around and just waves at each other. Make sure you acknowledge our guests. May let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, come on, let's magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. Let's make him bigger together. Let's make him larger than our problems. Let's make him bigger than the world says that he is. Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. We're grateful and thankful for this opportunity to be back in the Lord's house just one more time. Uh, to all of our guests and visitors that are here with us, we greet you with Jesus' joy, and we're glad that you have decided to worship with us this morning. Amen. And can we give God praise for all of our visitors and guests and those who are joining us online uh, this morning. We are so grateful and thankful for our God and how kind he has been to us to grant us another opportunity to enter into his house just one more time amen if we would just get that that God just gave us just one more time he didn't have to give us he didn't have to give us the one more time but he did and you know I, I I'm a little bit disappointed because I would think that the church of God would respond differently when you've been unable to get into the house of God over the last few months and then to finally make it into the place of worship that your attitude would be different. You would smile more. You would walk into this place and this place should be set on fire that God has done it again. <laughs> He's done it again. Hey man, listen, I wanna just cover a few announcements before we uh, move on in our worship experience. Uh, first of all, I wanna say thank you to all of you who have helped us in making a commitment to go out that it is our goal as a church to touch 10,000 homes by the end of October. And so can we give God praise for that? Amen. Amen. Listen, we are well on our way. We, we need about 30 homes to help us out to reach this 10,000 number. You hear what I'm saying? We, with the commitments we have, we're going to touch about 7,000 homes by the end of October. And we need just your help to help us to reach that goal of reaching 10,000 homes. Number one, to talk to them about their walk with Jesus Christ, to make sure that they are aware of the saving grace of Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. And then number two, to ensure that they are registered to vote. We don't care who you vote for. We want to make sure that you exercise the privilege of voting, of going to vote, and to help us in our efforts working with Common Ground that I committed that this church would help get 700 people to get to the polls. And I'm asking you to help us in that regard uh, by one, going to visit the people in your neighborhood. Listen, 100 houses per 100 households gets us to 10,000. You see how simple that is? If you count the number of houses in your block, it's about probably if your house is pretty well populated with, with homes, there's somewhere right around about 20 to 30 homes on one block. How long would it take for you to go up both sides of the street? What if you did one side of the street one week and then the next week you went to the other side and each week you just visited one side of the street? Wouldn't take you long to get it done by the end of October. See how simple we made that? You thought it was a lot. Man, the preacher is asking us to go to 100 homes, Minister Fletcher. Like it's just the end of, end of the world. And you know, here's some of the other benefits. Not only do we get to talk to people about the saving grace of Jesus Christ, but you're going to get exercise while you do it. You was looking for a reason to get back in the gym. You didn't feel comfortable because you didn't want to touch the equipment. But, but guess what? Walking up and down stairs, going from house to house is a great source of exercise. 
uh, and God has made a way for us to be able to do that. I also want to invite you all this coming Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday uh, at 4 p.m. Those of you who are not working, I know some of you all do it while you're at work. I uh, will ask for your support to uh, watch and join in um, on Milwaukee Declaration's Facebook page, uh, as I'm grateful and honored to be a part of some of um, some of the most prolific voices in the city of Milwaukee to talk about race. Uh, and so I'm asking you all to join us on Tuesday. If you look up the Milwaukee Declaration on Facebook, you'll be able to find them. And I'm grateful to be a part of uh, such esteemed pastors, Pastor Matt Arison from Eastbrook Church, Pastor Melvin Henderson from World Outreach and Bible Training Center, uh, Pastor Ken Locke from Evolve Church, Pastor Kurt Owens from You Flourish, Pastor Jonathan Miseron from Southbrook, and then uh, uh, Miss Lori Hendrickson from Milwaukee Basics. And so can we give God praise for this platform? We'd be able to talk to the world about, uh, about race from a biblical perspective. And we can do it in a respectful manner uh, that we have both sides, both black and white, to have this conversation. Then we we'll encourage you all every Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Uh, to join in with Lady C for the morning reflections. Uh, that has been a huge blessing to so many people week after week. Amen. Listen, at this time, we're going to prepare to give our very best offering to the Lord. And I'm going to ask if you would, if you don't have an offering envelope in which to give your offering to the Lord, if you would hold your hand high and one of our ushers will bring to you an offering envelope. You also can give via the Givelify app uh, and as well as our website to give to God. Listen, let me let me read this passage of scripture to you while you're preparing your heart and mind to give to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 11 says this. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Let me read it one more time. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. You know, as we're preparing ourselves to give to the Lord this morning, many of us find it to be taxing to give to God. Reason is we haven't disciplined ourselves to do it. But what the Bible has to say to you and I from this particular passage of scripture is that it seems to not be joyful but sorrowful to those who have not been trained by it. Are you listening to me? Once you have tried God at giving to him the tithe and offering, it becomes a joy to bring to the Lord the tithe and offering and not sorrowful. You don't walk up to the offering basket sad with a frown on your face. Man, God, I just, I really don't feel like giving this to you. But for those of us that have tried him and tested him at his word, we know that the moment we give to the Lord the tithe and offering that God has already promised to you and I, that he says that in be remaining faithful in it, all nations will call you blessed. He already promised he's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. But it seems to, to, to be not joyful but sorrowful. And the Bible says, and afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Here it is. Listen to me because every week we talk about this when it comes to giving and visitors that are here. We like to take the time because we want to be good stewards with the resources God has given to us. That number one, if you have unresolved relationships with another person, Jesus says that when you get to the church and there, remember, you have an ought with their brother, leave your offering there, go get it straight, and then come back and give it to the Lord. God don't want your mad money. But secondly, he says, bring to the Lord the tithe and offering. And then secondly, here at this church, is pay yourself. Here's the problem that some of us got, got with this. I'm going back to the same passage of scripture again. It seems challenging to make a budget and stick to it. 
Because some of us, all we did is we've done whatever we wanted to with our money, however we wanted to, and then when things did not work out, we went back to those ace in the hole people that we could go to and beg and borrow and steal to stay afloat. But because we have not been trained to do it, it seems challenging to do, to stick to a budget, to have your money laid out, every single penny laid out from one paycheck to the next for the whole month, and you stick to the budget. It seems tough when you ride down the street, you want to go stop, and it's outside your budget to go get something to eat. You know you got food at home. That didn't match up in the budget. And I'm saying this, church, because, listen, more than ever, we as the church of God need to have resources to help people. And so with that being said, the first Sunday in October is going to be our Big Give Sunday. I'm looking for every single person that's a part of this church to trust the Lord that all of us will tie together and to give over and above your normal tithes and offering because we're going to be replacing the roof on a 510 building. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say it was contingent on your giving. We planning to do it anyway. I mean, it's already scheduled to be done. But what we as a church want to be able to do is not use our reserves to do it, and we want you to take part in the joy of being able to help add to God's house. As God keeps adding to this church, our young people need a place to worship. We're not going to invest the money to renovate the lower level and eventually the upstairs of the building and the roof needs to be replaced. We ain't got no leaks coming in the building, but it's been on there for 30 years. Why wait until you start seeing leaks, Terrell? Why not be proactive that when God burdens your mind and heart to say, get it done? Listen, this is a word for somebody. He told you already to go buy winter tires. And you're like, no, oh, no, 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 I'm going to just wait till. Then you wait till you get a flat tire. Then you're like, go get, a, go get a used tire from somewhere. And you're like, oh, I'm going to just spend 30 bucks on this tire. Then you put it on. And then the snow fall. And then you're like, man, I'm swat slurving all over the place. I can't, I can't even pull off on the sidewalk to get no. Do I got a few witnesses in here? I ain't the only one that had been there. I had the preacher ain't got no problem in telling the truth on himself. But on this Sunday, hear me well, I want you to make a sacrifice to do it. And in that, on that particular Sunday, what we want you to do is those of you who give and cash or check to put it in this offering envelope that says special offering. This is going to help our finance committee know that those dollars are to be set aside. Those of you who give through the capital, I mean, through the Givelify app, you can give in the section that says capital campaign. And our intention is that the dollars that are raised over and above that, of what it costs to replace that roof, we're going to be setting those dollars aside to renovate the lower level so that our, our young people have a space for them to be able to worship that they feel is their space. That's for them. Listen, can we just give God praise for just vision and moving forward? <laughs> See, I, I know the problem, uh, Dorothy. I know why they why they responding this way. You don't always been a part of Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church. That you don't know. Not every church moving ahead, still planning to do stuff. It's a whole lot of them just trying to figure out how to keep their doors open. But God's got mission in front of us, and we ain't gonna sit on the sideline and just keep scraping to get by. Because there's still some souls that need to be won, that need to still know about the good. I'm trying to slow down. See, I'm glad Brother David here so he can hear about the testimony because he, he don't know what the Lord has done. See, Brother David uh, has some folks come in and come look at the roof over, over at the 510 building. One person came in and said it was going to cost $30,000, Brother Grant. Another person came in and said, well, it's going to cost $23,000. And I leaned on an, an older, established gentleman here at our church to say, hey, could you help us? with some men we're going to be introducing here soon as trustees of this church. And I said, could you help us find somebody who can help, you know, replace the roof over there? We don't want to be waiting until water comes swerving down the, down the roof. And then we got to look at the, at the nice benches that have been there since 1997 when that building was built and say, oh, Lord Jesus, what if, what if we just would have done it sooner? But we ain't going to wait till that has to happen. And God blessed us to secure someone to replace the roof over there for $11,000. You don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear what I'm saying. And all I'm asking you to do is just come alongside for the journey.
to see it be done. We ain't putting it on no credit card. We gonna pay that man cash when he walk up in here. So it get done. All I'm asking you to do is to help us to get it done. All I'm asking you to do is to help us to get it done. Listen, listen. I don't come stand up here and beg y'all to ask you for anything. But it's going to get cold outside. There's going to be people who are going to be homeless. We need to get this done so we can move on to the next thing of helping people. When the pandemic broke out, this church opened its doors to feed people who were elderly, who, who needed food to last them three and four days. We brought it to them. Right now, we have our doors open, helping families through virtual learning. I, we can just go on and on and on, and we need your help to do it. And listen, this is what I want you to do. As you give your sacrificial gift on the first Sunday, that money that's set aside to the capital campaign, I want you to write on the offering envelope what you're expecting God to do for you. Now, those of you who can't get with this, you think it's crazy, but for those of us that want to believe by faith, I'm asking you to join in with us to do this. Now, here's a challenge I'm going to say to you. Some of us, a sacrifice could be $20. I get it. That's you. But there's some of us that are in here and got no problem. We could write the check for the 11 grand and the church would be done with it. Don't fool yourself. There's some folks in here who can do that. But I'm asking you to trust the Lord. Listen, I want you to pray and seek the Lord for what is a sacrifice. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to say this to you, then we're going to push on. I asked you all before the pandemic, and I know some of you think that when events happen in your life, that makes you, your promises to God are null and are voided. But I asked this church, before the pandemic and us having to wear these masks, I asked those of you who are here to join in with us as a church to give $1,000 by the end of the year to help us to get these things over and done with. God is still looking for you to fulfill that agreement. So with that being said, if you're prepared to give your very best offering to the Lord, uh, let us grab our devices, our offering envelope, and let's hold them high, and let's ask the Lord to bless our gifts. After we have given to the Lord, uh, our children are free. To, we, parents, you're free to allow your children to exit out to the rear of the building. We have volunteers that are there that will take them over to the learning center for our children's church. And let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our gifts. Father in heaven, thank you now for all you've done for us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love and kindness. We ask now that you would bless the offering that is going to come through the hands of your people. Lord, we ask you now that you would help us to give to you cheerfully. And Lord, I pray this week you will work on the hearts and minds of your people to give generously on this first Sunday. I thank you now, Lord God, in advance that what will be collected on that Sunday will be over and above what we need to replace the roof on the 510 building. Thank you for the resources coming into our hands. Thank you now, Lord God, that the work that will be done will be done with excellence, that we won't have to go back and, and review the work to make sure that it is done and handled with care because this is your house. And I pray now, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you will bless every single person that will trust you and bring into you the tithe and the offering. Thank you for you doing these things now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you here on the inside underneath your seat, it's an offering bucket. We ask that you will reach underneath your seat and pass your offering bucket all the way to the outside. Those of you here on the out, outer aisles, there is a bucket underneath your seat all the way against the wall. If you will reach underneath your seat and pass your offering bucket into the, to the aisle. Thank you. Kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people don't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Folks without homes living out in the streets, and the drug habit some say. Again, parents, you're welcome to allow your children to go over to Children's Church. We have volunteers that are in the lobby that you can bring.
bring your children to the to the lobby area, the main lobby, and they will take them over, escort them over to our children's church. Step away, and I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all left alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be every day by your power you keep on Say thank you, Lord, for what you done for me. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the privilege of being able to give back to Him, which He so generously has given to us. I want to say this before I forget uh, that. We want to let you all know that in this COVID era, you see that our water bubblers are um, prevent you from being able to drink from there. And we understand we have individuals who need to be able to consume uh, some type of liquid that I want you to know that you're free to bring uh, your uh, clear liquid water uh, into the sanctuary. We want to stay away from anything else just because we want to continue to make sure that God's house stays in pristine shape. And so, uh, please, sir and ma'am, please feel free to come and bring your water bottle. Uh, we, we'll we'll reemphasize it to our ushers because, you know, they hold it down in here to make sure we, uh, <laughs> we keep God's house looking well. But we want to encourage you to please feel free to, to bring uh, water with you. And also invite someone to join you uh, with us. And also, those of you who are watching online, we want to ask if you would to like and to share this worship experience that the gospel of Jesus Christ may reach more people. Uh, at this time, I ask you if you would to grab your copy of God's Word to meet us in Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 12. And I want to just say happy birthday to all of the September birthdays and all of the anniversaries that have taken place in the month of... September. Sheena, I gotta say, Kenny raised the bar real high on me, man. With, with, he was celebrating his wife Sheena's birthday in a huge way. I said, man, that's how you hold it down, Ken, Ken. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. And you know, and I'm grateful to God that we can celebrate uh, seeing young people happily married. That marriage is a beautiful thing. Nehemiah chapter 8, and we're going to continue in our series of rebuilding the city. Uh, and uh, if you happen not to have a copy of God's word, you'll see it on the screens around you. Nehemiah chapter 8, we're going to read from verses 1 to verse 12. Uh, and I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Bible. And it says these words. And all the people gathered as one man at the square, which was in front of the water gate. And they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Then Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it before the square which was in front of the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and women, those who could understand, and all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Lord Jesus, do you see that? They were attentive, they were listening, they were dialed in. Ezra the scribe stood at a wooden podium, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Matiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, Manasseh on his right hand, and Padiah, Mishael, Micaiah, Hashum, Hashbadanum, that name I really had trouble with, Zechariah and Meshulam on his left hand. 
Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. While lifting up their hands, they bowed low and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua, Benai, Shabiah, Jamin, Akua, Shepethani, Hodiah, Messiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabat, Hanah, Peliah, the Levites, explain the law to the people while the people remained in their place. They read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give the sense so that they understood the reading. Then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest, and the scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went away to eat, to drink, to send portions, and to celebrate a great festival, because they understood the words which had been made known to them. Listen, this morning, I like to title this text in our exchange, just simply, Bring Us the Bible. Bring Us the Bible. You may be seated in the Lord's house. Bring us the Bible. I ask you if you would to bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. <sighs> Father in heaven, thank you now for all that you've done for us. We ask you to forgive us for everything that we've done that's been contrary to your will. And we ask you now, Lord God, that you would speak to us. Lord, we know that if you speak to us, we can be revived. We know that if you speak to us, we can get instruction. We know that if you can speak, if you will speak to us, Lord God, our lives will be changed and transformed. So, Lord God, we say to you today, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. God, we want to be transformed today. We want to be revived today. So we ask you now, Lord God, that you would encourage us, that you would uplift us that most importantly, you would save someone today. Thank you for you doing these things in your son Jesus' name, amen. A blind boy sat on the steps of a building with the hat at his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in his hat and spare change from people as they hurried by him that all of a sudden there was a, a man who walked by, simply put his hands in his pockets and found the spare change that he had to add to the young boy's collection that was in his hat. And soon, as he began to start to walk away, he thought about it, that he turned around. He took the sign that was in the young boy's hand and flipped it around. And on the back side, he wrote something else and stuck the sign back in the blind boy's hands. Soon, as the young man began to walk away, he stood afar off to examine what would happen. The boy's hat not only began to fill up with change, but it wasn't just simply the money that jingles, it was more of the kind that folds. And so, as it were, as the, the, the pace of people who were coming by to contribute began to slow down, the blind boy, with having his senses, senses heightened, began to hear footsteps that were familiar to the ones that came and took the sign out of his hand. That he said, sir, what did you write on my sign? He said that I only wrote the truth. 
He said, I said what you said, but in a different way. I wrote, instead of saying that the sign says that I am blind, please help. I instead wrote that today is a beautiful day, but I. They should be to simply see. See, my brothers and sisters, this morning when it seems that your life is full of troubles and it seems difficult to maintain an attitude of gratitude, all we need is to see our problems like a blackened storm cloud casting a dark shadow over our lives or we can pull back to see that the glass glass is not half empty but it is half full. This morning, my dear brothers and sisters, this this text is simply tailored to teach us that many of us have lost sight of how blessed we are and how we are in need to plead that the Bible be brought back to us. Look here with me at Nehemiah chapter 8 and verses 1 through 3. It says here, to really sum this up, that we need the Bible brought back to us because now we are ready to hear and respond with obedient lives. Look here with me at these verses. And all the people gathered as one man at the square, which is in front of the water gate. And they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Then Ezra the scribe, Ezra the priest, brought the law before the assembly of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. He read it before the square which was in front of the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of men and women, those who could understand. with this particular book of the Bible of what's happening in this narrative is that we get a glimpse to see that that sometimes the work that you do the effort that you give you won't always see the results immediately here's a word right out of God's word to you and I that 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 some things you're not going to see in your lifetime but you just got to keep working hard to see it come to pass and here it is as one evidence of evidence of this that, that when, when, when King Darius had signed a decree to allow the Jews who were exiled because of their disobedience to return back to Jerusalem, that the Bible shows you and I that in 458 B.C. that one of the men who was a part of the original group of people who returned back to Jerusalem from exile was a priest named Ezra. And for third Teen years, Miss Todd. He preached the word of God without fail. May I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, do you have the willingness, the commitment to persevere even when you don't see the results happening right in front of you? This seems to be an anomaly in a microwave society where we look that once we make investments, we should see the results right away. But this morning, the Bible is screaming at us, parents. It's screaming at us, grandparents. It's saying to those that are part of the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church that even though you may not see the results, just keep on doing the work. Keep on walking down your street, hanging the bags on people's doors, and they may never walk into into God's house. Keep on praying with your children when it seems like they're moving more closer to hell than to heaven. Keep on loving your spouse even though they may mistreat you. Because if you keep on doing the work, eventually you may see the results of your labor. And so here it is, my dear brothers and sisters. 13 years of sun rising and settings have gone by. 
13 years of people who were on the outside of Jerusalem longing to get back home, to return back to their homes and see nothing but ashes, that their heart is broken. They say to themselves, like you and I, God, if you are who you are, why would you bring me out of my sin to only go to chaos? And here it is, my dear brothers and sisters, when we want to be quick to determine and give a report card that we think is deemed worthy to the preacher. God is still working behind the scenes and softening the hearts of people and opening their eyes to see the reality that God has always been faithful. The proof is, is that if he didn't let you be in the messy situation, you wouldn't know how bad it is if God hadn't dust you off and raised you up out of the ashes. And so it is, 13 years go by. 13 years of God's people living below their privilege. 13 years of them living in poverty but wanting to walk with God. 13 years of them talking about God as a good God but not experiencing it. Lord Jesus. 13 years of working on jobs and working one job after another and trying to balance your money and having more month than money left at the end of the month. I guess I'm talking to the wrong church. But, but God is here to remind you, just keep on holding on to his hand. When you think God has let go, he'll let you know, son, I never stop letting you go. And so it is, my dear brothers and sisters, that God shows you and I that until a young man named Nehemiah showed up on the scene, the people were unaware of the potential that was right in front of them. Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, those that are here and those that are watching, that our eyes need to be reopened to revalue and put in its proper place when God sends people our way that are walking with him, that they can give us insight to potential that has always been in front of you. So many of us in here right now, we're complaining about the pandemic instead of seeing that there's potential for you to get ahead if you would just open your eyes. God is saying to you, guess what? You wanted your marriage to get better, but what I had to do was I had to shut everything down to put you and your husband in the house where neither one of y'all could go anywhere. And instead of you just thinking that it was just going to be all coloring all day, that it was just going to always just be romance. God says I needed to fix this because there's some emotional stuff that needs to get resolved. There's some problems that have been existing for far too long that if I hadn't shut the doors to make sure your job caused you to work from home where you couldn't go nowhere but the grocery store, that's the only way. That he could fix it. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. 13 years has gone by. And the people of God have simply settled for having the temple rebuilt, but not their lives. It's such a sad commentary to see people a part of God's church satisfied to only have a beautiful building to worship in, but your life is raggedy as all outdoors. And God brings Nehemiah onto the scene to show the people that you're living below your privilege. You're God's representative. When people 
people see you, your life is a demonstration of how good that I am. But if your life is a narrative that people will get to see about the type of God I am, God says, I need to hurry up and send Nehemiah. Because your story is telling a lie on me that I'm not a good God. <laughs> and so here it is, my dear brothers and sisters, that when Nehemiah shows up on the scene, because the people had a mind to work, that what had laid lingered for 13 years and ashes and 52 days was rebuilt. And in the midst of this 52 days of the walls of Jerusalem being rebuilt to occupy and to be able to house the people who had been exiled, they get to the place to recall we can't go no further until we get the Bible. Here it is, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't get this twisted this morning. Not everybody up in here is scraping and scrimping to get by. Not everybody up in here goes to the grocery store, ain't no knock against you, with, 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 with bags of coupons, knowing that every single coupon, if it, it must be used to ensure that we have enough food to make it for the week. Not all of us going to be riding in the wintertime with bald tires, praying that it don't snow. You don't hear what I'm saying. Not all of us are, 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 are praying to God that, that the moratorium on electricity would just be extended a little bit further. But there are some that are part of the redeemed of God that have prospered, that are making their way through. But they recognize that, that I've made it just this far. That, that if I just made it this far and it's only been but by the grace of God, I need God to refuel me for the next leg that he's taking me to. And when I get to that spot, I ain't dumb enough, I ain't stupid enough, I ain't arrogant enough to think I'm going to make it to the next leg unless I get the book down on it on the inside of me. And here it is, we get a chance to see that it's not the preacher chasing the people down, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but the people make up their mind that we need you, Ezra, to give us the book. Give us the Bible, Ezra. We've gone too long without the Bible. But here it is, my dear brothers and sisters, that Ezra and them calling on him to come and to give them the book. Ezra understanding how important this is, that if the people are in a position, that their hearts are ready, their minds are, are in a position to absorb intellectually, because I want you to hear this for a moment, that walking with God is not, is not a requirement for you and I to dumb down our logic or to eliminate it. But God says that I got a way that, that in you placing your faith in me, that, that I will show you that faith in me at times will defy logic. And so here it is, that when the people come to Ezra to say, Ezra, we want you to give us the book, that the people take to heart what Ezra says next. Ezra says to the people, because they're prepared to hear from the book and to apply it, he tells them to meet them at a unique space. He says, meet us at the water gate. Now, if the people had placed all their hope and, and all their influence and all their resources in the temple, why wouldn't he have them meet him at the temple? Because Ezra understood that if the people's hearts are ready for the word of God, the temple at times can seem to be uh, intimidating because there's so much ritualistic stuff that needs to go along with it. 
oh, let me bring it down to your street. There's some of you all that got friends and family members. They, they want to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. But the suits and ties and, and the nice shiny shoes and, and the clean cars and, and the church lingo. And, and even in church, we got our own language. We even got our own little Christianese language. When people walk up to you, they think you're from another planet. Because when you walk up to them, Brother Grant, you say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored, blessed by the best, walking with God, walking on. I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored, the first and not the last. And they say, I didn't ask you that. What's your name? How you doing? What city you from? Not but Ezra, he tells the people, meet us at the water gate. When he tells them that this is where they're going to meet at, at the water gate, the people build a platform for Ezra to stand on and to preach the word of God to them. Oh, let me back up here for a moment. In, ne in Nehemiah chapter 7, verses 70 through 73, the Bible shows you and I the proper perspective that people who want the Bible take to do, they invest in the ministry of the word of God and not simply go and suck dry the ministry of the word of God. Okay, okay. You don't see it, but oh, keep your Bible open. I'll show you. It's right here. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 70, some of the heads among the heads of the father's households gave to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, 530 priest garments. Some of the heads of the, of the father's households gave into the treasury of the work 20,000 drachmas and 2,200 silver mimas. Here it is, my dear brothers and sisters. That God shows you and I that even in your poverty, you can give sacrificially. And the Bible is saying to you and I this morning, because I understand there were some of you all in here who said, why would this man be asking these people to give to put a, a new roof that they need 11,000? The church ought to already have it. The church could have it if the preacher didn't, uh, 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 didn't, didn't drive the car he lives in or, or the house that he lives in or, or the church didn't look as well as it did. But guess what? The only reason that the, you wouldn't even listen to anything I got to say if I was standing up here in a long, dirty T-shirt. Or, or with strings hanging off of it and my shoes were all bent and lent over. My wife walked in here and her hair was all out of place and my son walked in here, he got food stains all in his clothes and you would say to yourself, what kind of God is that? That if he's that good why ain't he taking care of you? But the sign that the people were ready to hear God's word, they brought an offering. You would have, about two years ago, if the Lord would have asked me to preach this, I would have been scared of y'all, but I ain't scared of you no more. Because either the word of God is either going to draw you or drive you away. But they brought an offering. They brought it sacrificially because they understood that they were in a place that the only way others were going to be able to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ, that resources needed to be made readily available. But not only that, he brings all the people to the water gate, not only just to eliminate all the religious barriers, but he does it so that the people wouldn't be intimidated with all the, the flair that would have went along with it. Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are some people who know they need God, but they know about everything else that goes on in church that they're afraid to, to have to deal with those things. 
Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, there are some people who are going to stay watching service online because right now they, they feel they don't have the resources that they know when they come to God's house. They're supposed to bring to him an offering of some sort to, to, to show the Lord some type of gratitude. And, and, and so could you imagine thinking here with me uh, that if they would have met at the temple, that there would have been people who would have showed up at the temple with their offering. And there were some who didn't have anything. And God this morning is saying to you and I, don't dismiss what the preacher is saying by going to visit a hundred homes in your neighborhood. Because their desire is the same as the people here in Jerusalem. That in verses 4 through 8, they want the book, the Bible to be brought to them because they simply want it to be read and explained. Lord Jesus. Look here with me at verses 4 through 8. And Ezra, he stood on a wooden podium that they had made for the purpose. And on both sides, you see all the names of the people who were on the platform with them. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. You skip down there to verse 7. And he explained the law to the people while the people remained in their place. They read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give sense so that they understood the reigning. Nehemiah said something to you and I this morning that sometimes we have taken for granted if you've grown up in church all your little life that the preacher has a responsibility when you come to God's house. He or she is not to manufacture the news. They're not to alter the news. They should actually stand up in front of you and actually crack open a Bible. You don't hear what I'm saying. Don't just simply settle for seeing them walk up there with one of these devices and no Bible. I'll tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, be on guard for some of you all who are watching online as we have college students that are scattered across this country. That as you are looking for a new church, be leery and very cautious and you ought to run far, far away when the preacher gets up and he reads the text and closes his Bible afterwards. Sir, ma'am, you have nothing to give me on your own accord. I didn't come here to hear about your opinion. If I wanted to hear about the news, I could have stayed at home. If I want to know about how bad things are in the world, all I got to do is look out my window. But my soul is thirsty. That I don't need you playing around with wasting my time. Give us the book. Give us the Bible. Give it to us straight with no chaser. Give it to us even though we don't like it. Give us the book to correct us. Give us the book to push us. Give us the book to uplift us. Because we need. We need the book. We need a church that's got to say, I need the book. I need the Bible every time that I can get it. I wake up in the morning craving for the Bible. A few of you all know what it was like before God saved you. When you was fiending, you couldn't stop scratching. You couldn't stop touching your face. When you was away from your boo, your bae, when the coloring was just that good, you wanted to go back to get some more. And God says that, listen, if you give him a try, you will find out that God is better than any alcoholic beverage can provide. It's more sustaining and fulfilling than any relationship could give to you. It lasts more. It will keep you going farther than you ever thought possible and so it is that the man stood on a platform with 13 other individuals surrounding him that as he read the book they translated it so that others could understand those of you preachers who are watching or listening online, the people of God don't want to come and just simply hear about how intellectually proud or uh, proudness that you have, or how broad your vocabulary is. 
We're not in the academy to be impressed. We just simply want to hear the word of God be clearly explained and proclaimed. And so when they read the book, the Bible shows you and I that if you are hungry for the word of God, there are three things you and I should be doing when we come into the house of God. Number one, you and I should be attentive 100% of the time to the word of God being proclaimed. You say, Brother Preacher, why is that? I worked a long shift last night. I'm tired. I'm Churches, you don't understand, my furniture just ain't as comfortable as these chairs are. My couch is a little lumpy, that, 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 and I don't even really get as comfortable as I do. And some of us find ourselves, the only place we go to sleep and get comfortable is in God's house. I almost want to go walk down there and see, did, is there a stool underneath there for you to prop your feet up in an invisible recliner that just, like, gets you that comfortable to go to sleep every time you come to God's house? Shouldn't you at some point begin to question, God, why is it that every time I come to the Lord's house, I get that comfortable to go to sleep? Drove all this way, came across town to get here and go to sleep? You could have did that in your car. But look at what Ezra says to you and I. When we come to hear God's word, we should be attentive for three reasons. Number one is to honor God. I came here attentive, I came here dialed in, I came in with my notebook or note-taking device, that's a word for somebody, because you shouldn't just come to God's house to be entertained and think that you're going to retain what the Lord unveils to you, but if your life is moving towards purpose, when it's moving towards transition, you should be making notes to yourself of the things that the Lord reveals to you. You should stay attentive, number two, for your own soul's nourishment. And then number three, you should stay attentive to encourage the preacher. I can't tell you how many preachers there are awesome proclaimers of God's word. Ready and prepared to preach God's word. And they stand up in front of the people and it's almost like they came from Krypton and Superman or, they co or is they cousin. Because they sitting out there with laser beam eyes that just will, will look at you to mean mug you to hurry up and sit down. It's almost as if they're allergic to smiles. They look at you as if you don't hurry up, brother preacher, by the time that the Packer gang gets up and going. Me and you are going to have to have some talking words in the parking lot. But lastly, let me show you, my dear brothers and sisters, two things, and I'm out your way. That the Bible shows you and I that for people who long to get the Bible, that weeping is a result when we understand that repentance is a non-negotiable. I didn't just cuss. Repentance still needs to be talked about in churches. Everything ain't about health, wealth, and moving up to the next level. Everything ain't about getting your boo, your bag, getting your new car. Everything ain't about up and up and up and not correcting your sin. But when Nehemiah and these men simply stood up read the Bible, explained it to the people in a way that they could understand. Verse 9 says they started weeping. It's something how God's word is able to encourage and uplift, but also crush and destroy and open your eyes that I've let down God. I did it again. I said the last time would be the last time, and I did it again. Yeah. 
It will cause you to weep and to cry and to, and to whimper and have your heart broken that I've caused my family to stumble again. My community is in a state that is sin because of me again. Dare I say my marriage is not moving along but crumbling more because of me again and again and again. And God says to you and I that if you would come with an attentive heart, if you would come with a heart to hear from the preacher, if you would come in a way to honor God, God has a way that when simply the Bible is read, it ought to just break your heart. The people wept collectively, corporately, profusely because they were all guilty as charged. Nehemiah says, there ain't enough just to cry. God ain't moved by your tears. Cry him a river if you want to and not repent. It ain't moving God none. But he says to you and I, verses 10 through 12, and I'm out your way, that the proof of your understanding is displayed by winning, building, and serving. As the people begin to, 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 to weep and to mourn, because the gravity of their sin had, had come to their knowledge, foreknowledge, and understanding, that, that Ezra goes and says to them, this is a holy day to the Lord. Save your tears for another day, but this day has been set aside to celebrate the Lord's goodness, not your failures. And he says that if to the people that if you're really sorrowful and have a heart of repentance, look in your Bible there. He says, go eat the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared. He says that if, there, if you're truly sorrowful for the things that you have done, go care for the poor. Go clothe the naked. Go evangelize the lost. Go care for the children who have no one who cares for them. Go, go, go get a box of a hundred of those door hanging bags and go evangelize and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Because this is what happens when the people ask that the Bible be brought back. Can I say to you this morning, my dear brother and my sister, is your desire to want the Bible to be brought back? Is your desire to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ more closely? Is your desire to see your relationship with God go further than just simply church attendance? Is your desire to, to be a tool to be used for the master's use to change the world? Yes, you change the world. Well, God says this morning, my dear brother, my sister, guess what? He loved you enough to call you back to himself even in your life in chaos. He loves you enough that he doesn't want you to go get your sins together and then come to him. He wants to take you just as you are. The Bible says that God loved us in this way that he demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this morning, we're going to ask if you would to stand. And those of you who are watching online, we want to provide an opportunity. There may be someone who's watching or that's here. That this morning, your eyes have been opened to the gravity of your sin. And you recognize that I need, I'm in need of a Savior. You recognize that I've been going too long without being connected with the local church. And God's word to you this morning is just simply this. Don't let another day go by without being connected to me. He says, you've been looking for a church where the Bible is going to be clearly explained and proclaimed, and I've led you here. 
It's not by happenstance, my brother, my sister, that, that you're watching this today, that the person who tagged you in this video, it's not by just coincidence that you happen to be watching this, but God says it's time for you to reconnect with me. My brother, my sister, if that's you, you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior or as Lord, or you don't have a church home, would you take that step out of your aisle? Would you walk this way to say, preacher, I heard you speaking to me. Lord, I heard you talking to me. And today I want to come and recommit myself, reconnect myself, and connect my family with you once again. And here it is to help you feel much more comfortable with it. He says you're looking at a man who just preached the gospel to you, who was in the same predicament you were in. He knows what it's like to struggle with sin. He knows what it's like to live your life in a place of regret that you should be further along than you are, but you've been disconnected from the source who can push you along. So my brother, my sister, would you come? We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Would you come? If you're watching online, visit our website at embcmilwaukee.org and click on the link that says become a member and we will reach out to you. But my brother, my sister, we're waiting on you. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? If you're 100% sure if you were to die tonight, you would spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can take your seats. Only if you're 100% sure. way to heaven. Let's give God some praise this morning for the word of God. We have discharged our duty, yet there is still room at the cross. Church, I want to say to you this morning, I'm grateful to God for the word that has been preached this morning. But I want to say to you this morning, don't come to God's house out of habit, out of routine. Come here attentive to want to hear what the Lord has to say. Every single time. And I pray for us as a church as we're getting there progressively that it don't matter if the pastor's preaching or not to still come attentive to hear what the Lord has to say to us. We're guilty that if, if, it ain't, if it ain't my pastor, if it ain't my favorite preacher, we tune folks out, not understanding that, that if they're reading from the book and they share just a little bit of what God's word has to say, there's something that you and I can apply to our lives if we hear it and are willing to obey. And I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters, the reason behind this is Jesus put it this way. He says that man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We're grateful and thankful for this time of us being together and this time of sharing. I want to ask you all to invite three people to bring to church with you every week or to invite to join us online. And I'm asking you also to be praying for us as a church uh, and praying for me this week is this week I'm going to be meeting with some people. Um, as you all know, last year, those of you who are visitors that are visiting with us last year, we opened up our learning center to house people who were homeless. And this year, because of the coronavirus, and also we've also already committed ourselves to, to serving in a different way, not our homeless, but our young people and these families, that we're not going to be able to open our space to do it this year. But I'm asking you all to be praying with me and praying for me that this week when I have that meeting with them, we're going to find something for us to do to help those that are homeless, that are out sleeping outside in this middle of this cold, this cold, very cold winter. Amen, Sister Jarnetta. We ought to be excited when God give us an opportunity to be able to go serve the least, the lost, and the left out. I love the way the old songwriter says, thank you, Lord. It could have been me outdoors with no shoes, no clothes, all left alone without a friend. Only just a number, but God, all I want to say is just 
Thank you, Lord. And so, church, I'm asking you just to be praying with us. And I don't know what the Lord's going to lead us to do. But we're going to do something to help these people this year. Because my brother, my sister, listen, I, I can't do nothing but borrow his lines. You get sick of me if you want to. But the man's made such an impact on my life. He's, he'll always say, Reverend Joe Todd, that when you help other people, all you're doing is paying yourself. There's going to come a day that you ain't going to have all that you need to take care of yourself. And God's going to be able to recall to mind that you did for others. And now I'm indebted to do it for you. And so let's prepare our hearts and minds to, to be able to help them this way. Also, I ask you all to be praying for us. Also, listen, I told you, we're going to live out our mission. It ain't going to be just no tagline to win, build, serve. We're going to be doing it. Be praying with us and for us. I'm so grateful for uh, Brother Kenny Patrick. And we got some other brothers who are going to be working with them. We're looking to start an outreach ministry at one of these parks around here. Um, to be able to get like a football clinic where we can teach kids football, we can love on them, we can teach them about finance, we can teach them about computers. Because God's church ain't supposed to wait around on the world to give us permission to go serve people. But we need you, your support, your finances, your, your presence to help us in doing the work that God has called us to do. I uh, want to invite you all to join us this Wednesday for Bible study at 7 p.m. This week, our, our growth groups will resume. Um, if you're a new member here at our church, that's tomorrow. If you visit our website, you'll be able to join in with the Zoom and our Beginning Steps class. And those of you, depending on your demographic, visit our website. We want you to get connected with the gro growth group. My brother, my sister, listen, it's not enough to simply show up on a Sunday. You and I need to be connected intimately with other people. Because here's the thing, we're going to get going. You can come in here dressed up, makeup all put together, car clean, family walking out together, holding hands, smiling, and all hell could be breaking loose in your house. And don't nobody know it because don't nobody know you. And then you say, oh, that church ain't helping me because they don't care about me. Yes, we did. Guess what? We can only introduce you to the resource. We can't make you take advantage of the resource. So I'm asking my brother and my sister to be here on Wednesday for Bible study. Get connected with your growth group throughout the week. Let us stand to our feet and get ready to leave from this place. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we go, I want to say thank you too to... Uh, to the women and men who helped us transplant the flowers from our old building to the entrances. We're grateful and looking forward to the day where those flowers are going to be blossoming. And I want to say to those of you also really quickly who have children that are over in the children's church area, when you go over there, would you tell those volunteers, thank you? I, no, no, no. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. They want to be in here hearing the word of God just like you do. But they're sacrificing their time to be there by the way, as I mentioned, as some of you all are here, you could go join that team and help them that they could get a, a Sunday every now and then to be able to come over here to get an opportunity to be with their fellow brothers and sisters. Would y'all do that for me? Hey Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you now for this time of sharing. Thank you for you speaking to us this morning. And I thank you right now, Lord God, that the victory does belong to you, Lord God. Even though we came into this place feeling defeated, even though we were leaving here, we feel a little bit more pep in our step as we understand that we need your word. But God, help us to remember this week that the victory already belongs to you. Help us to persevere, Lord God. I pray now, Lord God, that you will give enduring power to parents that have been telling their children the word of God and it seems like their lives are going astray. I pray now, Lord God, in Jesus' name for, for husbands and wives that are in challenging and difficult marriages to continue to keep praying for their spouses. God, I pray for people that are part of this church who, who work for companies and their bosses are, are taxing and and, 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 and unkind and they at times they demean and, and insult them 
But you call them to the job, help them to persevere. Strengthen our business owners, Lord God. That if you brought them this far, you're not going to leave them behind. We ask you not as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Be with us. Watch over us. Speak to us even this week. We thank you for you doing these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. You all have a great, great afternoon.